just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Pucker Up, boys. And here we go, baby. Here we go. If you're driving home, make sure to stop in the bottle or grab yourself a case of the beautiful... Woo! There it is. Oh, that goes down a treat. Brought to you by Bloke Beer. Get in your local, grab a case of Bloke Beer. Uh, pack her up, boys. Uh, Sandorel, he is currently moving to Sydney, so he is going to be ready to go next week. Uh, but I've got the great Matty the Waterboy with me here. How you going, brother? I'm good. I'm on. I mean, I'm definitely on more of a high than you are after Brisbane lost last night, but it was just such a roller coaster of 80 minutes. It was absolute pleasure to watch. It was a gun game to watch. Gun game to watch. Oh, do- also, don't forget, pack her up, boys. Is proudly brought to you by Sportsbet, and I've got a I've got a bone to pick. I've got a bone to pick. Um, the Matrix is against me. The mm. Matrix is against me. Sportsbet, the new feed gets announced. The new feed gets announced, and in that same week, they put up a ad with Dan Gorringe. Oh no! Basically, him trying to get followers on his feet, <laughs> and 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 I'm just a little cameo in it. And at the end of the ad, it's it gives his face to follow. So. Guys, we're the little guy. Yeah, what's going on? Getting bullied around by sports bet internally. They're trying to they're trying to juice his numbers up. They're <laughs> trying to juice his numbers up. We're trying to do it naturally, baby. We don't need no big machine behind us to get us numbers. We do it naturally, baby, because we ca- the community cares. So if you uh, if you've been living under a rock, get around the battler. We're the battlers here. You know they want to give him all these legs up, all these talk about. He's a nepo baby of sports bet. That's what he is. <laughs> That's what he is. Dan Gorringe, the Nepo baby of sports bet, getting ads in the same week that it, he announces it and tries to have a crack. And let's just remember, for the history books, I was just living my life. He just had a crack out of me out of nowhere. Yeah, he started it. He started it. So this is what we do. We end it. That's what we do here at Bloke. We don't start it, but we end it. Now, he may be a Nepo baby of sports bet. They might be trying to put ads up to try to induce his numbers up on their huge platforms. That's okay. Because you know what? I trust the Bloke community to get the job done. So make sure if you've got a sports bet, if, you're, if you've got sports bet, open your app. You hit more. Go to feed. Give Beak a follow. You can see what I'm putting on. Uh, I had a cheeky little dabble at Broncos 13 plus just because I was feeling a bit <laughs> toey uh, last night. Uh, didn't come off. Didn't come off. But what an incredible game. Here's another one that I've got. Here's a cheeky one that I've got on my feed. And this is very cheeky, very naughty. Um, obviously, guys, only gamble what you can uh, afford. And, you know, just keep it low, pretty much. Keep it low, guys, what you can afford. So this is what I did. Um, la- this is what I put together earlier this week. And this is juicy, baby. This is what. This is just one of the five bets that I've got on my feed currently. And the good thing about feed is you can look what I'm punting at and you can copy the bet. And so, like, there are certain punts. 266 punters have copied one bet, 172 on the other. Anyway, this is what I did. A little cheeky one. You can go and see the other ones, but here's a little cheeky one for you. Dolphins against the Tigers are galvanless Tigers. Mm. I'm going Dolphins to win 11 to 15 margin. Ooh. So, around that, you know, 12 to 14 point margin. Herbie Farmworth, anytime. Yep. Jermaine Asako, anytime. Guess what that's paying? Oh, it'd be a fair bit. 35. Yeah, right. 35. Herbie Farmer with Jermaine Sarko any time against the Tigers. Yeah. You lock that in. Yeah, you right, lock that right in. Right side, they're going to... They're going to kill it. Yeah. They're going to kill it. And then Dolphins 11 to 12. Come on. They're going to win 15. by 12 to 14. Yeah. Surely. Surely. So there you go. And you just go to the feed. You give us a follow. And I've got a little description. Here's a description. After such a massive game against the Eels, Tigers may be a bit flat, especially without Galvin. Dolphins also at home. Katoa has looked fantastic. I'll be surprised if it isn't a high-scoring game nice um so give us a follow on feed guys let's not look the machine is behind Dan. the machine the huge machine of sports bet clearly have it they've identified their favorites they've gotten around him which is fine that's okay we love sports bet and we understand sometimes in families there's favorites that's okay you know what we'll be we'll be the little battler that gets the job done he's going to be the pampered little nepo baby that doesn't get the job done we're going to be the battler that when we reach the heights <laughs> the tippity top that's when daddy and mummy come back to us and go, you know what? You were always my favorite son. That's what's going to happen at sports bet. I just hate to say it. Um, so let's get around it. Give us a follow on feed. Let's dominate this guy. What, what, how crazy is that? That he just gets a big ad with his face on it. Give him a follow it's on crazy. sports bet. It's crazy. It's madness. Where's the fairness in that? Where's the fairness? There's no fairness. But you know what? We, we, can, we control the controllables and that's just having a dig, ripping and tearing. And at the end of the day, we get the job done. Uh, so give us a follow on feed. Can I uh, tell you? <clears throat> I sold my soul a little bit this week, betting on a little bet that I put on. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I've, for some reason, I've gone against that. I've actually gone Warriors 11 to 20 to win by 11 to 20. Wow, what's that paying? $5.40. That's good. Re- I, I saw some really good value in that. That's it's, juicy. That is yeah. juicy. I'll give you that. That's, yeah. that's worth, that's 
that's betting with your head. That's right. Heart. That's right. Um, I will say, actually, now that we're speaking of Rabbitohs versus Warriors, I've got an omen for you. Okay. I've got a fucking omen for you. I hope it's a good one. It's, a, it's actually a positive omen. Great. Okay, so this is what it is. It's a video of my son resuscitating I did say this. a fake bunny. <laughs> see, there you go. Is that an omen for the, for the Rabbitohs season? Is it an omen for the, the recovery of the rabbit season? My son resuscitating their season. When I saw that, that, that was my first and immediate thought. Yeah. So, look, if the, if the, if the bunnies turn it around this oh, week... I'll have rain to thank. That, that's rain resuscitating <laughs> their season. Um, so, there you go. There's an omen for you. Uh, other than that, how you been, bro? I'm good. I'm good. It's, um, you've been outside, right? It is absolutely torrential out well, there. How did I get it? Yeah, that's... A, <laughs> What a dumb thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all I'm seeing, I, I don't know who, who wrote it, but you saw the Bulldogs jersey yesterday. It's the, hot. Like, it's possibly the best heritage jersey I've seen. It's so friggin' hot. It's, it's funny. It's, look, let's just fucking calm down a bit. The Broncos heritage jersey this year, it was the best jersey. You know what? And I'll tell you why I personally disagree, because that was before my time. Whereas okay. this Bulldogs, like Heritage jersey is like the, the Eels last year is now, Heritage jersey is, is my childhood. It just makes me feel really old actually. Mm. But seeing that big, like obviously people more your age would like the Broncos one because that's what they grew up seeing. See, I didn't, I didn't really grow up seeing that because obviously I was- That's a great point, up. yes. <laughs> but I like it because it's just so different. It shouldn't work. No, it's, it's, it's terrible, but it's amazing. Yeah, like so for example, imagine a modern jersey in different colors or dragons whatever had that pattern on it you'd be like that's disgusting what i love about that jersey for some reason it just works yeah 100 percent. but anyway what i was going to say was i saw i think i saw it on punters and dribblers for, um, apologies i forgot who posted it but 20 years ago the doggies in that jersey beat the roosters on a rainy day in oh, 2004 there final. yeah okay so that's why you love it so much Oh yeah, that's so great, is that right? the best is that the best vintage jersey a heritage jersey you've seen so far best one i've seen so far i think wow. so this year or ever I can't think of a better one. What is the best jersey ever? I like the Balmain Tigers, just the orange with the t with the black with the black, black V. v. Yeah. Man, I like some of those Nike Bronx jerseys. Yeah, they're great. Just, there's something about the 2006. Pre I know it's obviously they won the premiership. There's something about that 2006 premiership jersey that I I love to get around. I, I, that's yeah. When it comes to Broncos jerseys, <clears throat> like when they bring that one back as a heritage jersey. That's, That's going to be elite. Another one, though, that is like... Actually, you know what? The hottest Broncos jersey ever? Mm. The Powers one. Oh, yeah. That, the that old is one, yeah. That is so hot. Yeah, yeah. That is so hot. Um, other teams, vintage... I mean, the Warriors uh, black and grey one. That's oh, yeah. sexy See, we were, we were debating this up at Redcliffe. I, I like... I think the Warriors should be black and white. That's, okay. that's how, again... Black and white or black and grey? Sorry, sorry. Black and grey. Yeah. Because that's... Again, that's what I grew up seeing yeah. so i liked when they brought the blue and the little colors back a few years ago but it's kind of worn off of me now I, I, but to be fair i think i'm in the minority there everyone everyone kind of loves the warriors kids at the moment man some of the warriors kids getting around like are oh. unbelievable at yeah. the moment. unbelievable let us know in the comment section greatest jersey design of all time yeah greatest jersey design of all time um i would love to know your answer to that uh what else has been going on bro um honestly just plugging away, watching some rugby league, just, I tell you what, I am really keen for, I never thought I'd say, oh, I haven't thought in a while that I'd say I'm keen for a Knights versus Dragons game on Friday night, because you never really see yeah. those teams play on a Friday night. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice change, but. You know what I reckon that is? The rain, yeah. I reckon that's uh, the KP effect. I reckon oh, that, yeah. I reckon because of his crazy run last year, They've, remember when Tom Travojevic went on his run and then yep. the next year Manly had... <laughs> Manly had all the nine games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I reckon what they've done there has gone, you know, the Knights, Frothing, KP's killing it. Mm. And so they've chucked the Knights on, yeah, on that good point. night. Good point. Um, but yeah, no, look, what's been... I, I just think this the start of this year has just been electric. Yeah. Like genuinely, some of the clashes, upsets galore. It's been incredible. Well, the last two games, obviously last night, we'll get, we'll get to it, but, you know... Kevin Walters and Craig Bellamy probably fuming, but everyone else absolutely adored it, all the neutrals. And then the game before that, Easter Monday, mm. which is just instant classic. Like there's, yeah. you're right, the quality so far this year has been great it's and to been, be expected. And what, what I like as well is like, 
even the bottom, other than the Gold Coast Titans, even the bottom tier sides have managed to like either get close to yes. or upset some of the top ish tier sides. Whereas I feel like, you know, in years past, the bottom tier sides are just getting pounded every week. Yeah. Like off the bat. It's obviously outside of the Titans who have struggled dramatically. Um, so it's been such a good year. It's such actually probably, year. it's probably only the Titans and I'd probably say South that have been disappointing so far when it comes to, you know, a bar that, you, that that team is set. Like, for yeah. example, the Dogs spanked the Titans in, in a hectic game. Dragons won a couple of games. Obviously, the Tigers. Everyone everyone else has kind of had a really, really, or at least a solid win or two. Like, it's just a good start. A, de- yeah. a decent start to the year. Exactly like even right, Knights yeah. have been a bit wishy-washy, but they did get the win over They've the Storm. They've Melbourne, yeah. Um, and there's, like, signs of, like, maybe it could work out, even though I'm, I'm a bit low on it at the moment. But nowhere near as low as... Um, you know, the Titans. The Titans at the moment are in the uh, yeah, they're in, league they're in of trouble. their own yeah. when it comes to disappointing starts to the season. But Leah, last night, uh, Storm defeat the Broncos 34 to 32. Uh, as a Broncos fan, it's like one of those tough ones to swallow because you part of you is going, mate, what an effort. Like, no mm. Pia Cora, no Willison, no Haas, Reynolds for half a game, no Walsh. So it's five in the starting 17 that we didn't have. Um, and so you go, incredible effort. But the other side is like, what a missed opportunity. Like that, if we had a, you know, that we bombed the Katoni Staggs one we bombed, the Jesse Arthurs ones we bombed. We had to nail those tries, obviously we win. Um, but I look at it more like, you know what? If we had gone down there with a full strength side and lost by two points, most people would be like, yeah, that's okay. Storm or a premiership threat. To go down there and do that with all the adversity that we face, yeah. I'm, I'm stoked with it. Especially at halftime. Like... I know you used to wrap at half. You used to wrap at half time by yeah, two, 18, I think. Uh, 18, 16 or something. But the like that. fact that Reynolds went off, I remember I was looking at the TV thinking, well, Reynolds has been the best player on the field so far. Mm. Well, in my opinion, he was. Mm. So, Bronx are gone here, and not only were they not gone, they pretty much led the rest of the half. And now, unfortunately for the Broncos, they end up losing. But mm. I thought the second half was a great effort. Yeah, I thought Ezra Mam easily had his best game oh. of the year. He was outstanding. Ben Takora, how exciting oh, is he? Oh, mate! Like, so he comes on in his debut against the Melbourne Storm. So we're not talking about, you know, a lower tier side. We're not talking about a side that's a top tier side, but it's not the best defenders. We're talking about like, you know, one of the better defenders in the competition uh, teams wise. He came on in 33 minutes, sorry, 24 minutes in 24 minutes. Obviously had that try, which is outstanding. 12 runs, 115 meters, 49 post contact, three tackle breaks, a line break, eight tackles, only two misses, no errors. For a, I think he's still a teenager, or if he's yeah, not, he's, he's nineteen. He's nineteen. That is unbelievable. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. And and what I loved about his performance is like real simple. Real. He ran hard. He tackled hard. Exactly. Didn't try to get crazy offload or anything like that. And and I think that for him, just you don't want to get, you know, it's it could be easy for him to come in and he has a game like that, and then you get a little bit ahead of yourself and you go well. Geez, like, you know, I killed it. Now I'm going to start adding offloads. Now I'm going to start trying mm. to do all this extra stuff. I think for him, it's like, mate, that's the blueprint for you now. Just run run hard, tackle hard. Don't worry about all that other stuff. And by the end of the year, you'll easily have a starting Well, that's start. how he got his try. Yeah. He just ran hard. Yeah. And he, what I loved about that as well is before, like, the play got set up, he was doing that. Like, so that wasn't a set play. That was a reaction to the dummy half going under. And he just went, boom, just got it done. So I thought he was outstanding. On the Storm side, Jerome Hughes. He electric. was my man of the match. He sure. was electric. Yeah. Him and Katoa, uh, outstanding performance. And, you know, the funny thing is, is you, you actually look at that spine of Grant, Hughes, Munster and Pappenhausen. They haven't played together since 2022. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it was the game Pappy did his, Pappy got injured. So that's the scary thing with the Storm is like, we haven't seen their spine for essentially the whole season. Mm. That was the first game together. And look how electric they look like harry green out of dummy half oh it's every time he gets you every time yeah it's just like constantly putting pressure on the middle defenders constantly making the right decision he, he very rarely stuffs it up uh pappy around the ruckers was dangerous as well munster good return game yeah. like did his job there was no communication rust was there they it's were just, just all in sync just yeah their ability when they get a quick play of the ball they just go oh boom. they just go uh you know outstanding stuff from from the storm and if I'm being honest, I actually thought the Broncos were the better side. Um, now, that's probably bias, but the Storm just hang in there. They just hang in there. They keep in touch. They keep in touch. And they played uh, probably safer footy. And then they had big moments. They had big moments. Um, so, like, as in, when I say better side, 
apologies. What I mean is, is like when you consider how many players were out and then you consider basically full strength outside of Nelson, um, you'd have to say like Broncos at full strength would have been the better, would have probably won, would, would have most likely been in the best position yeah. to win that game. Yeah, I mean, I'd even say if Reynolds didn't get injured, they probably win the game. Or at least they put themselves in a better position. Correct, you never, yeah. you just never you know what's going to happen in a game. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's what's exciting for the Broncos. But at the end of the day, we, if you're the Storm, you can only play what's in front of you. You can only play what's in front of you. Uh, and also, they were missing Nelson off of Solomona, who we know is such an important part of their side. And on top of that, like, you know, with the Storm, a lot of the tries scored against them were so good. It's like, look, if you can score those tries, yeah. sweet, fine. Because we know, if you're the, from the Storm's perspective, we know that nine out of ten sides are never going to score tries like that yeah. against us. Like that was just a freak, like a freak kind of eighty minutes where everything seemed to come off for the Broncos. Um, got some lucky calls as well. I mean, there were tough calls against the Broncos too, but they also got some lucky calls against them. Uh, this was in for them. The Broncos and the Storm got harsh calls against them. Uh, and so the way I go, go out of that match is like a lot of people go, oh, the, the coaches will be a bit disappointed with how many points scored. Maybe they will. I personally, I'm not because look at the incredible tries. Okay, Xavier Coates, who's, who's stopping that? Yeah, no. Nah. Like what, what could Dean Manor have done? When the ball went up, I was like, fuck, game over. who's going to stop him? Try, like game over. Then the other try where he kicked it through, incredible. Mm. So who's like, again... That's just something that like pretty much Xavier Coates and very few other people can do. So from the Broncos' perspective, you're going, you know what? That's about 12 points that you just go, you chalk it up to these yeah. things happen. Yeah. And then from the Storm side, the Jesse Arthurs kick back in. The, you know, the Ezra Mam, you know, yes, you probably could have, you've got to catch that on the full. That's terrible, like really poor from Warbrick. But the bounce did land exactly where yeah. he needed it to land. And so I just... Well, oh. Even like Mam's first try was just incredible. Like, like, it was a, like you can defend it sure but it was just brilliant for the yeah Broncos. like and so you're going into week in week out footy that's not going to happen every single week for both teams um and so i think the takeaway i have from that game is penrith are you know head and shoulders the number one team in the comp right now um but i think that panthers and storm are also on another level right now like right now the premiership threats for me is penrith Melbourne Broncos. Yeah. That's like out and out, prim like who I would lock in to right now if there was a grand final, like if there's a final series played right now, two of those three teams would be in the grand final. Yeah, no question for me um, too, yeah. Now, like there's still a premierships outside of that, but they're just like obviously down the pecking order. Uh, in regard, how good's Katoa been? Oh. Uh, that's another example. Okay, so the one try where Mam made a bad read, yes, that is something that you should be able to stop. But the other one where he got bumped by Katoa, it's like, that's just good. That, that's a yeah. a great line by a massive back rower. You know, that's what, what else could Ezra Mam do there? He put his body in front. He got bumped. The only reason when the only time I get frustrated when uh, tries are scored like that is if, if the player doesn't try at least to put his body in front. Mm. If he tries and he gets bumped, it's like that's footy. Whatever. That's yeah. rugby league. Uh, so really, really good performance. Um, you know, by both teams, to be honest. I thought the Storm were outstanding, uh, and I thought the Broncos are really good as well. It's fun. it's crazy how, like, it, 15 minutes into the game, if you said the final score is going to be 36 or 34 to 32, you, you think you were crazy. Yeah. That first 15 minutes was the best 15 minutes of the year so far. Well, so, yeah, definitely the first 15, best 15 minutes of footy I've seen this year, and it was nil all. And then <laughs> the floodgates just opened. Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was it was a pleasure to watch. It's so good. And like Hughes, just reminding Hughes everyone, is a you know, he is a freak. And he often gets left out of the best halfbacks in the competitions. Yeah. You know, um, I guess discussions. It's crazy but, to think that he was a fullback just yeah. four or five years ago. I tell you what, though, if he was eligible, eligible for origin, it would be Hughes Cleary in the halves, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's how good he is. Yeah. Um, and could you imagine him outside Cleary with that oh, running game that he has? Far out. Be scary as. And so I think it's just that typical, we speak about it all the time. If you don't play Origin, you just don't mm. get the same hype as Absolutely. other people. And, but Hughes is a top three halfback in the game. Definitely. Like I, I personally think he's a top three halfback. Obviously, when he's in form, he's a top three halfback. Yeah. And this year, he's in form. Last year, he was a bit down. This year, he is absolutely in That form. 2021 year, I think it was, that... He, he got his flowers that year, I will say. Like, everyone yeah. was like Cleary and then Hughes. Yep. But, yeah, a couple of, not off years, but quieter years, people yeah. kind of forget. And you're right, Origin, 
If you don't play Origin, you just get forgotten about like that. Which is which sucks. Yeah, you know? And that's why we need more games for the Kiwis. Yeah. So that the Kiwis can get the proper respect that they deserve as as like top tier players. Like I think they do to the core audience like us. But maybe the wider, more casual audience, just because it's like they don't get origin. Um, from the Storm perspective, Xavier Coates, what a start to the year. It's holy. It's got to a point now where, back to sports bet, I think every time Storm play at Amy Park, I'm just going to get on him. Just get on he's him. He's paying two bucks. It's just, I looked at the start, I'm like, all right, that's free. That's Yeah, he's genuinely like really setting the tone for basically the big winger in the competition this yep. year of like, you know, being so well-rounded, like so well-rounded. And also that... The multiple crossfield kicks now that he's kind of set up, like I, I really think that he's finally starting to hit his straps club-wise. I think there's a, like a year or two where he's a little bit quiet. Well, when he signed and he didn't explode straight away, everyone's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now he's really hitting his straps, mate. Really, really hitting his straps. He was outstanding. Uh, Katoa, we've already spoken about him. I thought um, I thought Bloor was pretty good. I thought yeah. uh, Howarth was good when he came on. It was good to see Howarth. Yeah, there absolutely. And he looks he looks physically imposing. He's so big. He's big, yeah. man. Like he geez, he reminds me of Angus Crichton. Yeah. Like unbelievably. Um so it, really, really good win for the storm. Just a like a mixture of mixture of like gutsiness, but also just flair. Yeah. Like just incredible. Even though Munster he didn't do much, but just you could see his presence was felt out there. Yeah. Like every time he touched the ball, you, something was gonna happen. They they all had his eyes on him. He's he's a big in for Melbourne, obviously. Yeah, and they're like he's just going to get better and better each week. He yeah. looks he looks fit too, um, so really good win from the Melbourne Storm, and they're a premiership threat this year. Imagine when Nas gets put back in this side, mm. far out, and also they've gone from ooh a bit light on in the pack to Law played well, Howarth played well, Chance still out, he could come back in. Yep. Um, yeah, things are looking really good for the Storm. Things are looking really really good in regards to the Broncos. Obviously, the Jesse Arthur's drop ball, massive drop ball. You know, you just gotta you gotta nail that. He had such a good game, like it's yeah, uh, he frustrating for him. He was so good, and that one little thing. So on Cobbo. What about Cobbo's? It was just before the penalty goal when he made the break down the left and just no look, bang. It didn't lead to a try or anything, but it should have. It really yeah. should have. And even just the the just the smoothness when he hits that outside line and he just throw it like he just throws that fend out and it's like he just swatted me away like he was nothing mm. like it didn't didn't look like he was trying too hard um yeah so on Cobo, he's something special something incredibly special it's good to see that he just he he he, he injects himself into the game doesn't he yeah he which is and he backs himself which is what you time. want yeah. every time um uh, the will say the try, the Wishart try that was probably my most disappointing thing of the night with the broncos that that was uh fletcher baker and ricky you, you cannot be – I mean, you know, obviously it happened. But as two forwards allowing a utility yeah. to bump over you like that on the line, it's just – unfortunately, it's just unacceptable. I mean, I didn't – when it was Wishart, I was like, is that actually Wishart? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, he didn't score. And then you're like, oh, my God, he, he did. did score. That's yeah. Unfortunately, it's just unacceptable on your line. And little moments like that, even though they all played so well for the 80 minutes or the 79 minutes or whatever you want to say – that's that's that that is letting your teams down because you're a big body on your line and he's running straight at you. You should pick him up and put him, drive him back. Mm. Um, and that's just a lapse of concentration. That's the lapse of you're on your line. You should be thinking, I need to win this contact rather than I'm just going to catch this guy. Now, fair enough. If it was over a half or it was on the edge, but that's a that's a fronty and a back rower getting steamrolled by a um, you know. And the pro the problem is is. Only a few weeks ago, on that same edge, Toto did a similar situation over, over four players. So that's just little tiny things where, like, hopefully those little tiny things are ironed out by the end of the year because mm. it just, it unfortunately, Fletcher Baker has been a part of two of them. Um, so he's just got to clean that up. He's just got to clean that up because he does so many good things. Like he played really well last week, and he, you know he worked his butt off this week. He just got to fix those little lapses in judgment. Because that's all it takes. Boom, that's the match winner. Yeah. That's the game lost. You know, and yeah, and the same with Jesse Arthur. It's like he had an incredible game, but it's just that little lapse of confidence as a winger, that's your job to finish that. So, you know, it's it's not like the worst situation ever. It doesn't mean they played poorly overall. It's just tiny lapses in mm. concentration that separate the the best of the best from almost. So it's funny, I actually think the Stags one was the opposite of a lapse in concentration. I thought the play before that, he had three things in his mind and he probably just tried to do all of them and got caught. That was 
That was very unfortunate. I kind of felt sorry for Staff on Stags for that one. Yeah, see, I'm a bit less forgiving. Stags an experienced campaigner. You have to ice that. Mm. He, he has been there and done that. So, like as I said, you can look at the the negatives of those things, but that's just purely concentration because we've got the talent. We show it on the game. So it's just about building into the year. It's as I said, it's not like terrible. Like yep. how dare they? It's just like those key tiny moments. Are the, are just the, the thin line between almost and what an incredible win. Yeah. Because imagine they won that game. Oh. Like, it's like w- w- you went down a storm with all these players missing in it. So, oh, we'd be, we'd be sitting here going, Broncos amazing. are on. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, but I tend to look at it like I'm extremely excited. Watching the Broncos play like that with all those players out, man, when I they get the players. Great signs. Like, when they get them back, oh, oh my God. Uh, tell, just, you what, tell you what, um, in a true indication of that missed tackles don't actually mean it as much as what we should, what they should, um, or sorry, as what people say, last night had less missed tackles than the 8-0 Storm Panthers game. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, now, don't forget, menu log, hungriest player, it is RTS. Use the code RTS for $7 off pizza this week. Uh, also, our Musashi code is BLOKE35 to get 35% off Musashi products, excluding bundles. And the LDV T60 Power Play of the Week was Tom Dearden for his ridiculous for his ridiculous chase on Selwyn Cobo. The LDV T60 has 160 kilowatts of grunt, make it, making it one of the most powerful utes in its class. Uh, now, New South, New South Wales halves crisis. Moses, not back till round 12. So just one game before, just before Origin 1. Reynolds, done his hammy. Cleary, he's back in two weeks, but he should be fine. Um, it is getting a bit like, oh, you know. I mean, if the team was picked tomorrow. Well, you'd be stuffed. Yeah. Um, who takes that six? Like, Cleary, I think you just, you know, he's going to be fine. In. But who takes that six jersey now? It does, qu- like, put a lot of questions there. Well, I am I was with you. This, at the start of the year, everyone fit. I'm probably going on form as well. I'm probably going um, Mitch Moses. Mm. At the start of the year, I would have definitely been Cody Walker, um, but he's not really informed. So I'd probably go Moses Cleary. But now that Moses, I think, uh, like I th- I think one if week. If you're Hines. Yeah, Nico Hines. If you're Hines, you're sitting there going, what an opportunity to get that six jersey. For sure. And that's his position. We know he can play six. He can obviously play fullback as well. Hines at six could be pretty scary. Well, I think Hines and Cleary as a combo, they complement each other perfectly. I, I think so too, because then Hines doesn't have to worry about kicking, yep. organising, anything. He just goes, clearly tell me where you want me to be. And you basically got like a really good fullback at six. Exactly right. Um, yeah. that, that if he needs to pick up the slack kicking-wise or whatever, he can. Yeah. So right now, if I was to select, it would be Hines, Cleary. Yep. Um, but I guess it all just depends on, you know, one game before Origin with See, Moses. I, I couldn't tough. give Moses one, one game. He needs more than one game, you yeah. reckon? Surely. Surely. And like Hines is playing, I know he's leading Dally M's, everyone's making a joke out of it, but he's still playing, he's playing good. Yeah, he had one really bad game. Yeah. But he was obviously good last week and good the weeks before. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough for, for uh, New South Wales. Lockie Galvin, get him in there, you reckon? Oh, Jesus. Could you imagine? <laughs> we would as well. It's something New South Wales, just a dumb thing New South Wales would do. <laughs> Put this, all this pressure on this young fellow. Yeah. This fucking, like Jared um, Mullen back in the day in Pierce. Raiders re-signed Timoko. Uh, he's re-signed till the end of 2026. Uh, you know, we spoke about it maybe last week. Uh, uh, it was after the Warriors game. So, yeah, yeah. Last week. So, yeah, look, I expected this. Um, it's good for Timoko. It's good for the Raiders. Uh, and, like, they would be, they would have been crazy to let him go to the open market. Mm. Absolutely crazy. And just smart. Smart from the Raiders. And I'd, it hasn't got a figure here, so I'd assume it didn't break the bank. Yeah, because the Raiders kind of announced it, I haven't really seen a, a figure floating around. That's great stuff. So As a Raiders fan, you, you're sitting there going, you know, that's a strike centre that probably would have had a lot of other clubs interested that's going, no, nope, I want to stay here. Um, that's a good sign of, a, of club culture. Yeah, I'm stoked that the Raiders are able to keep him. Geez, they've lost some players. Just in the last 15 years, they just keep losing players. So... They couldn't afford to lose him. No, Holy no shit. way. Oh, man, if they lost him. Uh, and so it's really, really good signing. Like a really good signing. It's a sign of a really good club culture. The fact that, that it didn't drag on, the fact mm. that we weren't in the media going, oh, this is club's interested, that's club's interested. It just got done yep. quietly. And as I said, we're not talking about a, a oh, he's a pretty good centre for, for down there. We're talking about one of the better centres in the competition and a current New Zealand centre. And it's not like 
he's off contract this year. Like he doesn't go to open market till November one. So yeah. they've wrapped this up really, really nicely. Really, really nicely. And like that's, you know, the Raiders, they struggle to get people to come to the club. But uh, when it comes to running and keeping players, this is what you want. You mm. don't want noise around it. You want the guy to be like, yeah, I don't want to speak to anyone else. I want to stay. So very, very good stuff from uh, the Raiders. I can't believe that it's round five and I'm genuinely looking forward to Raiders games. Yeah. As it is. Like, I can't wait for Raiders Eels. They're, like, they're not the most exciting team, but I, I feel something when I watch them. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, they, they just rip in. I, I love watching the Raiders play. Mm-hmm. I love them because they're always underdogs. Yeah, great stuff for the Raiders. Really, really exciting. Uh, now, on to the Doggies. Roosters. Uh, doggy, uh, doggies paying three eighty five. dollars Roosters, six, uh, hundred, uh, $1.26. 126 Jesus. Ooh, $1.26. Get on that. <laughs> who, do you, who have you got this game? i got Roosters. If it was dry, I'd say Roosters 13+. plus. I still think Roosters might win 13 plus their four pack is considerably better but um you never know in the rain anything you never, can happen never know. uh really important game for the roosters i think they need to put on a really good solid win performance yeah um had a great start to the year then they've been a bit up and down then they go and tail the rabbitos up but that was with the different halves combination and also rabbit uh rabbitos, how good are they really yeah. and it's the game that you they always get up for so like hard to take much yeah. out of it whereas if they go out and dominate the bulldogs it's like yep okay this is a good start to the year it's three from six then or three from five sorry yeah um you know if they lose this so it's like two from five and it's the dog so if they go out and do this and do it well then you're like yep roosters great start to the season i think uh, they get the job yeah. done. i think brandon smith's gonna have a big say today like considering how wet it is yeah yeah uh newy knights versus saint george jeez I'm, I'm these odds of 273 for the Dragons, like I'm not so confident on the Knights. I was on the Knights and then I was 50-50 and then I heard that Tyson Frizzell got ruled out. So I'm changing my tip to the Dragons. Yeah. Look, I'm head to head. I'm going Knights, but there's a bit of value. There's St. George are playing, paying $8.50 for 13 plus. Wow. Like I, I'm not like 13 plus is obviously not saying that will most likely happen, but mm. 850 is juicy ass. That's big do- yeah. I got on I got on 13 plus for the Dragons at 775 or something like that. Was that, that against the, the Titans? No, I, I got them like, like for this. For oh, this for game. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also I got them for the Titans yeah. as well. And so with the with the Dragons, I'm like, they're so hit or miss, you just don't know. Oh, so they've they've gone up. Yes. Oh wow. 850. Jeez, I thought they would have come in. Maybe the weather. Maybe the weather, weather yeah. yeah. Mate, 850 for 13 plus, and you don't know what dragons are going to turn up? Yeah. It could be the, the world beater dragons. Because the world beater dragons, a team with Ben Hunt, yeah. slow, they've got points coming out of their ass if, they, if the good dragons turn up. 850. So, look, it will probably sound silly. Knights will probably go out there and win 13 plus. But, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, can I have someone to comment at 10.30 tonight? Yeah, after the game. <laughs> hey, if you disagree with this, comment, comment now. now. And then you know what? I'll respect it. If you, if you go, that's the worst take ever. Again, the take isn't that they're going to win 13 plus. The take is $8.50 is juicy as fuck for 13 plus. Yep. But if you comment now saying that's terrible chat and it comes turns out to be true, then mm. you go, you know what? I respect that because you said it before the game. Correct. If you come in the comment section <laughs> after the game, you're a coward. <laughs> that's that's coward rhetoric. Waiting till the game finishes to be like, you idiot, you said this before the game. Well, where were you then, bros? Yeah. If you were listening before the game, you could have commented before the game. Uh, so <laughs> I got nothing but respect that someone says before the game they have a hard stance. I go, you know what? I respect the shit out of that. And you know what? You were right. And I was wrong. And mm. that was a stupid take. But you don't get the stupid take. Uh, I don't exceed a stupid, stupid take if you do it after the game. Mm. Um, South Sydney Rabbitohs, uh, Warriors. I'm really liking the Warriors in this one, to be honest. Yeah. As a South fan, I'm pretty concerned. Um, just the Warriors forward pack just scares the Jesus out of me, especially Adam Fanua Blake. If it's... If it rains tomorrow, um, yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Obviously, I'll be. I hope everything I say right now is completely wrong, and they put mm. on a good show. Which it's funny. Last year they had a terrible run, but they had one really, really good game, and that was against the Warriors last year in New Zealand. So oh they, yeah, that rain game. That rain game. game. So they 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 can do it, and we know that what they're capable of. They just haven't shown it in so long. So that's why I'm tipping the Warriors. Mm. But let's go see us. Okay, Manly versus Panthers. I'm I'm going Panthers here. Yeah, I think Panthers, I think, what is it, $1.65? I think that's really Scary good. Scary game for Manly because it's, it's, a, it's a really, depending how you look at it, it's a massive opportunity. If they go mm. out in there and beat the Panthers, season completely back on track. Like, yep, if they go out there and beat the Panthers, or even if they get close, it's like, yep, the Manly Seagulls have started the year really well, it's confirmed. If they go out there and get pumped, it's like, oh shit. Like, I wonder how they're going to approach it because Scope, brought up yeah, yesterday that fuck it game where <laughs> it's it was a it was looked like it was working but obviously 
you know, saying we're not going to get in an arm, we're not going to win an arm wrestle. I don't like that. Yeah. But so are they going to, surely they don't take the same approach yeah. this game, or will they? Who knows? Surely not. Surely not. You'd hope not. Uh, Dolphins, Tigers. I like the Dolphins here. Dolphins, great value here. Without Galvin, I just don't know if the Tigers will be able to. Galvin's been their key. Mm. They've been great, gritty, but I just reckon Dolphins at home. Yeah, and the Wayne Dolphins, they've had a couple of, they had a shocking first week, but they've been half decent since then. Like they smoked the Dragons. Uh, what was that other game? I can't even remember, but they'll, yeah, they've been good. Oh, the Titans, yeah. Mm. I, I know, I know, you know, bottom-ish teams, but yeah. Cowboys, Gold Coast. I think the Cowboys rip and tear. Yeah, worried, worried. Very concerned for the Titans. Yeah. I don't see, yeah. It, like, especially that the Cowboys are so bad last week. Mm. Like, they're going to want to bounce back. Yeah. It's, yeah. Raiders, Eels. I'm going Raiders, but I think this is going to be a, a cracking match. Can't wait for this game. Normally, I hate the Sunday 6 p.m. game, but this is a cracker. Uh, I'm going Raiders just because Moses is out. Uh, don't forget, you can watch all games on KO. So make sure all the games we just talked about, sign up to KO, give them a watch. Plus, there's a bunch of other content on KO. It is the most rugby league content you can find uh, on the interweb. So sign up to KO, watch a rugby league. Uh, ice hockey fight. And our NHL clash between New York Rangers and New York Jersey Devils erupted in a brawl in the first few seconds of the game. Oh, so as soon as the puck was dropped, every player from each team except goaltenders started punching on with each other. There was five one-on-one -on -one punch ons. All ten players received five-minute uh, penalties. Video below. Uh, yeah, I watched this on the internet before on, oh. on the Instagrams. Uh, that's great stuff. I love, love it. It's like old school ice hockey. Is just like old school rugby league where they there was just just fuck it, like just punching on let's with each other. Let's just punch on. Let's punch on, baby. Like oh. let's just do it. I love the fact that there was just a gentleman's agreement too. Yeah, five one-on-ones. Like it was clearly planned. Like yeah. the puck got dropped and they all just went hell for leather. It's like I love the like the honor in the whole situation. Five one-on-ones. So mm. it wasn't like just a brawl where you know people are pulling each other and someone might have two on one or three on one yep. or three on two. It was generally like you got you, you got you. All right, yep. let's punch on. And then we settle it up. That's it. That. And then four of the five kind of like petered out a little bit, but then the main two just, just kept went. going and yeah. everyone just kind of stopped and watched. That's the best. That's great stuff. I love it. Uh, don't forget, every time your team wins, you get a free grilled burger the Monday after the game. Head to the link in the show notes and follow the prompts, which include picking a footy team, signing up to the grilled loyalty program called Relish. Then when your team wins, you get two for one burger voucher to use on the following Monday. Make sure, I think this... Maybe over soon promotion on bloke. Yes. Um, yep. So weeks. hit the link because it might be over soon unless we extend. Hit the link, sign up for your chance to win a two for one voucher with Grilled every Monday. Uh, that is us done and dusted as usual. Oh, make sure to grab a case of bloke beer from your local. Also, make sure it takes literally two seconds. Go to feed, give us a follow. Let's show them what we're made of. Uh, and also, you can abuse me if you get on any any punts that I get on. You can go, mate, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. I got on it and it was terrible. Uh, or you can ride the winds with me. Uh, anyway, as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.